Hey, you listening in, what's your toxic Dungeons and Dragons trait? Come on, admit it down in the comments below. We all behave badly sometimes. I have a slight micromanaging problem. Been DMing so long that I know a lot of the subclasses and spells in and out. So when in a situation and someone isn't using their ability, yeah, I speak up. I also backseat DM sometimes. I try not to and apologize when I do. Luckily, my group of friends are usually grateful for the reminders, but I really try not to. I often zone out during other people's turns and have to catch up without people noticing too much. I create special resources on Roll20 or a random piece of paper to track how many arrows I use or how long is my concentration to not mark it every round because I forgot to. DM INTERNAL ANXIETY TO THE MAX! Here's my toxic player trait. When another player asks the DM a question about game mechanics, I sometimes end up answering them myself, kind of undercutting the DM. Now my toxic DM trait, however, is when the players aren't paying attention or are having side conversations about something totally unrelated to the session and getting on my nerves. I just start randomly rolling dice behind the DM screen and ask them for random checks, and then I don't explain what the checks were for. Main Character Syndrome I interact with the world a lot and tend to be able to guess what the DM wants us to do. Consequently, I'm the first person most NPCs want to talk to. Therefore, I've seen across multiple campaigns at different tables, if I'm not active about involving others, I become the main character. Also, when I was newer, my first 5th edition campaign had a it's what my character would do problem. Now, he wasn't evil and he wasn't handicapping the party, so it wasn't something I got called out on, but it was one of the many factors contributing to the lack of group cohesion. ADHD, so sometimes if I feel like someone is belaboring a point, I kind of get agitated. Like, if you've asked the same question six different ways and been told no every time, let it go. Also, related to ADHD, I space out sometimes when it's not my turn. I think it might be why I mostly play marshals. It's a lot easier to plan your turn if your plan can really be only, I roll to bonk. I am someone who rolls his eyes when a friend of mine uses Firebolt instead of his bow when the bow clearly does about twice the firebolt's damage. After years, I'm slowly getting better at shutting up and just letting them play. But since I'm the DM 99% of the time, I'm used to being at my A game all the fucking time. Because otherwise, my toys are toast when they meet the party. I always put the most thought and emotion into my character's backstory or life outside the campaign to the point where I feel like a try-hard dork. Gotta do that acting! I really don't want player characters to die. I want the threat of death and the danger of death, but in reality, I don't want anyone to really lose their character to PC death. It makes it stressful for me to plan out encounters that might be deadly. I won't tolerate dice that cannot be read easily either. If it has some fancy script and a color that has poor contrast with the model, and each time you roll it we need to hold a ritual to get the result, I will take that die and I will throw it out over the street as far as I can and I won't shed a tear for it. And if you bring it back or something just like it, I'll do it again. Bard, can you use healing word on me? What do you mean you don't know a healing spell? You don't have any buff or control spells either? The only damage spell you have is Vicious Mockery. What the hell does your character even do? Not my finest moment, but I apologized after. Well, I get overexcited and have to make sure I don't take the spotlight away from my fellow players when I too am a player. Now as a DM, however, this works pretty well. So well, in fact, that I keep getting asked to do paid campaigns by my returning players. When someone uses their ability wrong, I tend to correct them, especially if the rules don't allow them to do that. Ugh, I hate playing with people who don't invest the same level of effort as I, or the DM, or as the DM, does. Oh, you brought your character on a scribbled napkin and you don't bother to bring dice. How cute.
Aw, you didn't level from last session. Aw, oh, you don't bother to read and research your spells. How does my character work again? I hate you. I always pick meta spells, like silvery barbs, fireball, counter spell, and web. I also get annoyed when players spam guidance in all checks or ask to use perception in an investigation situation. I get mad when people don't know the basic rules. I can't play an evil character. I just feel really bad being mean to the PCs or NPCs. So all my characters end up being morally gray or very good. I create characters with really hard to pronounce names. And then I have to struggle with hearing everyone rightfully mispronounce their names. Have you submitted any to Mr. Ripper? If so, I will strangle you and ban you off this channel because I cannot pronounce some of your freaking names. If I'm playing a less charismatic character, like my ranger right now, I'll hang back in certain social interactions to let our warlock and paladin shine. The issue, however, is sometimes I'll just zone out and forget 90% of what had just happened. I feel bad because I know my friend works really hard on his world building. Let me think about my action for 10 seconds. <laughs> Got it. Okay, I attack with my rapier. I've attacked with my rapier every round for the last three rounds. Throwing way too much at my players. When I DM, I'll think of the party as if it was just me four other times and be like, yeah, I could beat this, so why not them? Then everyone nearly dies and I gotta bullshit some things. Oh, and shitty homebrew stuff that's way too complicated. Yeah, stop with your self-insert crap. If you die, you die. I want to get the most I can out of the limited time available. I want to optimize fun. I want to play at least the two hours we can barely get per week and not spend the time dithering going when there's a pretty obvious path on what the adventure is. I actually want to play the game as it's written and intended, with short rests and dungeon delves and everything. I also hate when people try to be funny or make meme characters or purposely try to engage in shenanigans. Don't try to be funny. If it's funny, it'll happen and be funny. I talk a lot, same here. I'm being more careful not to soak up screen time too much, and it's definitely easier with a smaller party. I just sometimes worry that I'm taking time or attention away from the other PCs. I also have a really hard time role-playing a really dumb character. My barbarian has six intelligence, but in my last two campaigns, I was often the ideas guy, so my first impulse is to come up with fun and creative plans. Ah, uh, my poor Barb gal could never come up with such a complex thing on her own. She's illiterate and has about one brain cell to devote to anything outside of combat. I tactically know the greatest advantages and make suggestions to other players to optimize our resources and reduce our resource loss in doing so. This is not taken very well. I'm secretly a real power gamer, wink wink. I always come up with <clears throat> backstory, yeah, okay, reasons for it, but I try to make my character as powerful in combat as I can, then fudge their backstory to make it work. Wanting to play Pathfinder instead. Hey, welcome on over, pal. Pathfinder's way better. When the DM gives my character some kind of boon or magic item, I absolutely must kindly suggest that they reword it to fit in with Watsi, Wizards of the Coast, language design traditions. Even though we all trust each other at the table not to abuse mechanics in unintended ways, I just have an unfathomable need for all brood mechanics to be worded as if they're straight out of an official source book. You must not be fun at tables. Rules Lawyer Although I try not to interject, I do often get asked, Is that how this works in the rules? And I am the guy who will bring up a rule discrepancy after a session. For example, our second level druid tried to cast Hold Person. Simple. The DM didn't catch it. 
I simply brought it up at the end of the session. I also like to be optimal when it comes to combat within my character image. I'm happy to build any character, mind you, or make suboptimal combat character planning choices. I'm rarely trying to do the most optimal possible options, but generally, if I have an idea of the character I want to play, I'm going to try and optimize that idea if possible. I can't help but chime in even when it's not in my character's wheelhouse. Negative two intelligence barbarian, I can't help but weigh in on the planning. Low charisma artificer, I have to bite down on something to keep from chiming in to an attempt to convince an NPC. I try, but I just want to be involved so bad. I have ideas and I want to share them. Too much role play. If left to my own devices, I will just explore the world. Players who just want to roll dice for big numbers tend to get annoyed by this. It makes for more interesting options than just combat encounters, in my opinion. I'm ambivalent towards stacking roles, which means I usually play what I want rather than filling the hybrid niche roles, and this leads to things like two of the same class. My main RP group is a bunch of 45 plus year olds that just have been playing together for three decades, so it's kind of fine with them, but others have stated, I'm stealing their thunder, <laughs> which kind of sucks because that's not my intention at all. It kind of makes me sad. Hey, play what you want to play. It doesn't matter if the party is optimal. That's sort of the fun of having a variety package. Variety is the spice of life and death, you know. Hey there everybody, Brian Von VA checking in after the vid. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, ring that bell. Yes, you listening in right now, I'm talking right to you. Subscribe, ring that bell. The algorithm gods demand it. And let us know down in the comments below. You toxic little goblins, you absolute brats of people. What's your toxic D&D &D trait? Come on, admit it. Come on, we're not gonna judge you. We won't judge you, I promise we won't judge you. Honestly, though, we do appreciate and love every single one of you, so make sure to have a nice, happy day as best as you can, know that you're valued, and come back for more, because we'll be waiting for you.